is the Director of Policy at Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, and he joins me this morning on the phone. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? Morning, Meg. Thanks for having me on. Well, you're welcome. Is it sunny where where you are right now? It is sun shining through my uh, my home office window here. Can't complain. Well, despite the um, sad results and, and what we faced yesterday, it was really kind of a grim day outdoors. It, it, the, today's proof that the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> it actually came out today. So That's yay exactly for right. us. <laughs> well, I, I invited you on the program to talk about this uh, this report that you put together, this brief that you put together, the surge of non-agency pork in Wisconsin. And sadly, we're not talking about bacon. We are not. Yeah, so, um, you know, earlier on this uh, this year, Governor Evers released his proposed capital budget. So when we think about the state budget process, there's really kind of two things to consider. We have the state budget as a whole, which, uh, you know, funds things like schools, roads, um, state agencies. And then we have the capital budget that funds kind of uh, the buildings that the state owns and maintains. So um, capital budgets kind of financed with a with a mix of a couple different uh, funding sources. A lot of it's done through bonding, and it, there's kind of two different types of bonding, not to get too far into the weeds, but um, there's bonding that's supported with yours and mine tax dollars, and then there's bonding that's supported with uh, program revenue, which I think a best example of this is um, you know, like a dorm, right? So we, we put the, a dorm in the capital budget, it's financed really with the fees that students pay to stay in that dorm. Um, so this is uh, the, the capital budget's being considered right now. And uh, so far, kind of the way the process is laid out, the agencies kind of send their requests in. The governor proposes what he would like to do. Um, it gets sent to the building commission and then eventually to the finance committee and the full legislature to consider it. So. Um, we're, we're at the process where it's in joint finances hands and uh, they really need to consider kind of all aspects of this budget. Shout out to Pat, Senator Pat Teston. Woohoo. Yes. Well, right. I, I certainly hope that uh, and I, I mean, I have faith that uh, those Republicans that are on the Joint Finance Committee will take a good hard look at this. Uh, it's a, And as I've read, it's a record high. Um, Three point eight billion dollars in earmarks, um, and and I and I guess, or I should say, three point eight billion dollars earmarks, an historic amount, in in light of the fact that we have this significant budget surplus to begin with. Yeah, um, yeah. Just for some comparison's sake here, if you compare this three point eight billion dollar capital request to, let's say, Governor Walker's kind of final capital budget request, his was about two point two one billion, which was is largest, but this is about 31% more than that uh, in comparison. So if you kind of compare the approach between the two governors, this probably won't surprise your listeners at all, but generally speaking, Walker uh, typically proposed much less capital spending, and the legislature kind of typically took took his recommendations because it was a lower amount. Under Evers, that proposed spending has ballooned each budget, and the legislature's kind of had to dial that back and pass something that's more palatable and reasonable. So um, that's kind of where we stand with this. I I should point out, so when you see these capital budget requests, the the largest requester is typically the UW system, and that really holds true in this budget. About 47% of that $3.8 billion, if it was approved as is, would go to the UW system for any number of projects. Um, This also includes like maintenance for state buildings, and I think those are things that we should probably prioritize uh, instead of building new buildings. Um, let's maintain the maintain the infrastructure we have already. So I guess a general rule of thumb is if if it's a Democrat, they treat taxpayer money as the Powerball, and so they're just they're shooting for as much money as possible. Let's talk a little bit about some of the projects that these this you know this budget is is requesting funds for that really don't, well, that really don't apply to, uh, well, what we should be asking for, what what we should be asking taxpayers to fund. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think one thing we've definitely seen under Evers is growth in this category that's called non-state agency requests. So just to give a little historical context, uh, 
back in 97, the State Building Commission uh, allowed non-governmental entities like nonprofits or local governments to come in and request dollars from the state uh, for construction or renovation of facilities. So if you look at past budgets, this is, uh, some of this money has gone to things like the Medical College of Wisconsin or the Marquette Dental School, Milwaukee Museum last year or last budget. Um, but this year we really see a, a massive growth in the spending request. So um, under Governor Evers' proposed budget here, he asks for, uh, for eight projects uh, that cost about $270 million and would be about $63 million in taxpayer support. So uh, we can, some of these projects are, you know, you really want to question whether or not they have a state in, statewide impact. And I'll kind of go through some of the top line ones here. So um, one of them is $15 million for a convention center and sports arena in Janesville. Um, about $9.3 million for a soccer stadium in Milwaukee, uh, $7 million for a railroad museum in Green Bay. And uh, the last one I have here is a million dollars for uh, renovations to dorms at the Peninsula Players Theater in Door County. So I think, you know, as lawmakers uh, look at these proposals and uh, judge each of these projects on the merits, they really need to look and kind of make a determination if these really do have uh, kind of a statewide need and if it's appropriate for taxpayers to be subsidizing them. You know, what's the common denominator in each one of these cities? I, it seems to me each one of these cities has a Democrat mayor, Janesville, Milwaukee, Green Bay, and Door County. And there, if you look at a map of this last election, those are the little blue areas. So it appears that, at least in my opinion, it appears that uh, Tony Evers is rewarding those parts of the state that uh, vote accordingly. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that's a that's a, a good suspicion. I uh, haven't confirmed anything like that. And I guess when the when the agency gets there, like when the governor's office gets these requests from these nonprofits, they're supposed to look at them through kind of an objective set of criteria oh, to right. to really see if if they do have kind of a statewide purpose. Um, and whether or not it's in the public interest. We had requested documents from um, Evers' uh, administration to kind of see what kind of analysis they did on these projects. At the time of this publication, we hadn't received those yet. Something we'll follow up with when we do get them to see if they've really given a, a kind of the full scrutiny that these projects deserve. Um, but it's, it's not surprising coming from this governor that this is what we're, we're experiencing. Do you anticipate that this these will be, I don't know, I don't know what they do in the Joint Finance Committee. They just line item, move or t t remove them from the budget. I mean, is that, uh, do you anticipate that any of these projects that are being proposed? I mean, like I'm looking at this private soccer stadium. You, you, you mentioned this, nine over $9 million to build a private soccer stadium in Milwaukee. I mean, how, how can he justify that? I mean, I guess, hello, we're talking right. about a Democrat. Right. Yeah, I, I expect maybe some of these to, um, you know, I think the, the committee will give all the all the projects in the budget the full consideration they deserve. But um, I think if kind of history is the best predictor of what they might do, I think you'll either see a lot of these projects removed or um, the taxpayer support on them dialed back significantly. So and I think it, it really shows uh, in the, when you look at the numbers here. So. Uh, Walker's last capital budget, uh, they, he had about $87 million in non-state agency requests, only about $15 million in taxpayer support total there. And that, as I had mentioned earlier, this is, we're at $270 million, about $63 million in taxpayer support. But I think where you see the biggest stark uh, difference between governors here is, um, you know, anyone can request these funds. Walker only approved about 45% of these non-state agency requests, where Evers has approved 96% of, oh, of what's course. been requested. So you see, you can go to you can go to Governor Evers and uh, make this request. You're likely going to get it in the budget. But luckily, I think our our lawmakers really do look at these more closely, and we'll, we'll consider whether or not they kind of meet the criteria that's laid out in the laid out in the process. Yet another example of how Democrats seem to believe that money grows on trees 
or I don't know, comes from a publisher's clearinghouse and it's, it's theirs to spend um, with no consequences. Well, Kyle, thank you so much. Kyle Kanan, again, is with uh, his policy director at uh, Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. What's your website where people can learn more about your organization? Will-law.org. Well, keep up the great work. I, I mean, I, I look at you as sort of a gatekeeper <laughs> uh, to our, well, I, 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 a facilitator to our legislature, to hope our Republican-led legislature to hopefully rein in the uh, the spending that uh, Governor Evers is trying to propose. And I certainly appreciate your hard work on this report. So thank you, and I appreciate you joining me this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Have a good day. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.